Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. And um, I'm down in Louisville at my little writing retreat hotel. Um, I might have a plane fly by, so bear with me, or the geese are pretty loud. I needed a break from my, my writing. I am just about done with my book on shame. But uh, I'm going to be speaking today on the topic, the nature of shame. And I've got 15 uh, really uh, characteristics of, of shame that, that sort of defines the very nature of shame. First, I want to start with a definition that I like, and I got it from Brainy Quote uh, online. And it says, shame is a painful sensation, a dishonor, derision, contempt, disgrace, and reproach. So shame is a painful sensation, dishonor, derision, contempt, disgrace, reproach. I think that captures it pretty darn well. That's, that's what shame is. Imagine carrying that around in your soul. And that's what, that's what many of us do. So I'm going to go through these, these qualities of the nature of shame. They're not in any particular order, but the first one that came to mind is having a really harsh, punishing inner voice. When we grow up with a critical parent, it's real common that, I mean, you really can't help but take that energy, that negativity in, and that, that harsh voice that they used on you becomes a voice that you use on yourself. And many times in a fight, you'll use it on your spouse and you'll use it on your children. But that's, that's one of the defining characteristics of shame. It's, it's having that really negative, really harsh, really dark, really mean voice and your number one person that you criticize is yourself. The second thing, and this is a different kind of, of shame, is uh, being overly sensitive and defensive and emotionally reactive when you're being critiqued. And I would, I would say half of marriage counseling is just teaching each person in the couple that you don't have to be so ouchy, that you don't, just because your spouse is critiquing you this much does not mean that you have to react this much. You can just relax, take a deep breath, and listen to them. And that's such a revelation for many couples that they're doing that because they really don't know that they're, they are as defensive as what they are. I think we've got the airplane coming. Um, a third thing about the nature of shame is people spiral in shame. Where spiraling is when you start out with a negative thought and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it, it can set your mood for a week or a month. Uh, it's an overreaction. It's uh, going from bad to worse. Uh, if, if you've been in a shame spiral, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's uh, negative energy that's just spiraling out of control and getting bigger and bigger to where uh, you're really not objectively observing what's going on around you. Uh, the nature of shame is a dark, oppressive cloud that follows you around wherever you go. You know the character Pigpen in Peanuts? A guy that walks around with all the, all the dust and dirt following him around. That's shame. That's what shame is. Shame follows you around and uh, affects you wherever you go. And it won't come off with a shower. Um, here's another quality of shame and that's being painfully shy. 
I was painfully shy when I was a boy. Um, we had to move about every year and a half, and I refer to myself as a square-headed Charlie Brown kind of a little kid. Um, and when I was little, I, d I didn't have a lot of words, and we would move to a new place, and just as I was making friends, we would up and move again. And um, that didn't make me feel very special, and it didn't make me feel very loved or very popular, and I got the tag, Mark is shy. Um, what I was was shamed and unsupported and not given enough love. I'm really not, by nature, I'm really not shy, as you can probably tell by these videos. I, I sort of like attention. I, I, I can be the life of a party, actually, but when you're wounded and when you're damaged, um, you don't shine very brightly. Um, part of the nature of shame is an inability to nurture yourself well. Um, to love oneself is to nurture oneself. To make time to exercise. To make time to rest. To make time to have fun. To do things that you really care about and love. Um, to get a massage, to ride a motorcycle, to go on a vacation. Uh, I love to walk on the beach and get my, my toes in the water. Uh, I, I guess I do like water. I'm, <laughs> I'm drawn to this water. I'm drawn back to it frequently. Um, shame, the nature of shame is hopelessness. It's not seeing the hope that really is there. The nature of shame is, is really utter self-contempt, self-hatred. Um, using that harsh voice that I talked about to really bludgeon oneself and beat yourself up for making mistakes. We all make mistakes. Part of the nature of shame is not spending money on, your, on yourself because you just don't feel entitled. You earned it. You worked hard for it. You deserve it but you just can't let go of those shekels to uh, do something nice for yourself. Uh, and that's sad. Um, some people go the other way. Their, their little kid is too big and they overspend and they get themselves in debt. But people with a lot of shame tend to be miserly and uh, they tend to be Mr. Scrooges with themselves. Um, Here's one, not feeling comfortable with compliments. In my men's therapy group, every once in a while, the fellas will go around and start saying a lot of really nice things about me and saying that I not only helped them, I've helped their children and generations to come. And I'm like, let's, can we move on? You know, let's, uh, I, I've, I feel more comfortable if one of them's mad at me and is confronting me for doing a bad job. Uh, than to sit there and say, you know, what a great therapist I am. I, I, I just, you know, I struggle with that myself. Um, it feels uncomfortable. Um, part of the nature of shame is extreme perfectionism. But extreme perfectionists rarely will cop to being perfectionist. But they will say that they have, they have perfectionistic tendencies. <laughs> it's not... It's not that they're extremely perfectionist. They, they just got some tendencies. So um, not being able to just relax and not have to be perfect. One of the really big characteristics of shame, as I mentioned, is beating yourself up. We all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. And part of recovery from shame is learning how to be gracious learning how to be forgiving, learning how to be kind with yourself and not uh, say such harsh and negative things about oneself. Part of the nature of shame is, is feeling unlovable. You know, you, you learn how to be loved in your family growing up and if you weren't loved particularly well, you won't know how to love yourself particularly well. Part of the nature of shame is gravitating towards negative, gravitating toward another airplane, I'm sorry, 
gravitating towards and believing and even cherishing, cherishing negative feedback. Let me try that again. Gravitating towards believing and even cherishing negative feedback. Uh, basically, what, what shame does is hand you a whip and then uh, really pressures you to beat yourself bloody. Um, it's, it's what that negative voice in you is so strong that when somebody gives you negative feedback, um, it resonates. Uh, for many years, my main addiction was religion. And I, I grew up being yelled at and criticized by my mother. And then when I had a born again experience at age 17, uh, the faith that I gravitated toward was a very harsh and negative faith. Um, that uh, bird is carrying on with itself over there. Um, I love the parts in the Bible where it said, deny yourself and carry your cross. And I love the book of James. Didn't was I didn't have a lot of uh, a love for uh, any kind of grace. Uh, I, I, I like the, the harshness. Um, uh, I'll date myself. I, I, I loved a Christian musician from many, many years ago, who, who at that time was the number one Christian musician named Keith Green. And uh, he was a great musician, but he was very harsh and very shaming and very critical. And I loved him because he sounded like my mother. And that's part of the nature of shame is, is just gravitating toward and putting up with a lot of negativity. People that are shamed will get into a job and they have a shaming boss or a shaming culture or uh, a shaming company and they'll stay because it feels familiar. They're used to being treated that way and they put up with it and it doesn't dawn on them to leave. The last uh, characteristic or quality of the nature of shame is picking partners who treat you really mean and really poorly and abusively. And that, again, it goes back to how you're loved. And it's just Mother Nature's way of helping us to work on ourselves and heal ourselves is whenever we're wounded as children, like we all are, we get all twisted up on the inside. and when we're twisted up on the inside, it determines who you're attracted to. It determines your love life. So somebody who is criticized and shamed uh, when they're 21 and they're at a party, let's say there's 99 really nice, really healthy girls at a party, which there's no such room on this planet like that, and there's one really mean, shaming, harsh chick and that's the one you'll like. You'll take her home and keep her for the rest of your life because it'll sound like your mother. It'll sound like the way that you've, you've always been treated. And uh, that's, that's the nature of shame. So uh, shame doesn't have to ruin your life. It doesn't have to dominate your life. Uh, what recovery is, is knowing the truth about yourself, knowing where your shame comes from, and uh, working on yourself effectively so that you overcome shame and you learn how to love yourself, you learn how to take care of yourself, you learn how to set healthy boundaries. And that's, that's a beautiful thing when you see people, their eyes are getting brighter, their lives are getting happier and they have more peace because um, those things that dominated their childhood, the negative things, the harsh things, they don't have to continue to relive them over and over again. So my book on shame, Healing Toxic Shame Through Recovery, will be available in two to three weeks, just depending. I've, I've got to uh, add some pictures and get it digitized, get it edited, but be looking for that. 
want to encourage you to join our channel, Family Tree Counseling, on YouTube and to visit our website, FamilyTreeCounseling.com, where I do have five other books, including a book on abandonment issues uh, that has been very popular and has been sold all across the world. So thank you very much for watching. It's, it's my wish that you would heal the shame that has been hurting you in your life and that you would live a more blessed and happy life. So thank you very much for watching this video and, and God bless.